Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Beauty Beacons. Today we are going to talk about Elizabeth Sedol. So if you know anything about the Pre-Raphaelite painter's movement, then you have probably come across Elizabeth Sedol at some point, whether you knew about it or not. Elizabeth Sedol was a painter's model, a poet and an artist in the 19th century, and she was a true muse of the Pre-Raphaelite movement. Especially for her husband, Dante Rossetti, he made countless paintings of her. I believe they are said to be thousands of drawings and paintings of her made by Rossetti, but she's probably most well known today for being the model for Millet's Ophelia. So she's said to have had a quite unique beauty and she definitely embodied the Pre-Raphaelite beauty ideal. With her long curly copper hair and her long thin nose, she wasn't the standard beauty of the time, but she definitely had this ethereal kind of almost magical beauty about her. So Elizabeth had quite a tragic life. She had very poor health, she suffered from mental health issues as well and a drug addiction as a result of that. One story that is known about her, which I'm not exactly sure if this is true, but it is said that when she said model for this um, Ophelia painting, she was lying in a bathtub that was heated by lamps and at one point the lamps uh, stopped working and Millet didn't notice and she didn't say anything and she lay in the cold bath until she caught some type of disease. Um, it's debated whether this was, you know, bronchitis or whatever it was. It was quite serious and she was sick for a very long time afterwards. But that is not what killed her in the end. She died of a drug overdose at a very young age, only 32 years old. But by that time she had already been well documented <laughs> and went down in history as a beauty beacon. So today I'm going to recreate her iconic look. She has a very natural look, um, which is definitely something the pre-Raphaelites loved. That kind of natural bare beauty. So of course with that copper hair color, beautiful hair color, her face was quite pale as well and her eyebrows and her eyelashes. So I'm going to start with the makeup and I'm going to begin by laying down a base of foundation um, just to even out my skin tone. And then I'm going to go over with a light concealer just to make myself a little bit lighter. And I'm going to place this strategically in some points that I want to highlight because I am going to do a lot of contouring and highlighting for this look. So when that is blended out, I'm going to go over with a layer of translucent powder so to lay my base down so that I can work with more powders on top. And I'm going to take my contour and highlight duo here and I have this brownish kind of contour color and a white highlighter, both matte. And I'm going to start by taking the brown contour and I'm going to begin by contouring my eyes and I'm going to make them look a little bit rounder than mine actually are. So I'm going to draw this round kind of arch shape in the socket of my eye. And when that is done, I'm going to contour the sides of my nose to make my nose look slimmer and longer. And I'm going to contour underneath my lip just a little bit. Then taking a bigger brush, I'm going to contour underneath my chin. And I'm going to do this to make my face shape look a little bit more like a rectangle. Um, Elizabeth has a way more rectangular face than I do. I have a little bit of a round face. <laughs> so I'm going to try and fake that by contouring there. And I'm also going to contour the side of my face to make my face look a little bit slimmer and again more rectangular. So then it's time for the white highlight color and this I'm going to apply on the kind of center parts of my eyelids and just above the apples of my cheeks. Okay so now that my basic face shape is done I'm going to work on the lips and for that I'm taking this kind of nude colored slightly orangish lip pencil. I'm going to draw that typical lip shape. Now she had quite a round cupid's bow so I'm going to try and imitate that just looking at pictures of her. And then I just filled in my lips with this color and then I realized that I had made my bottom lip a little bit too big or at least my natural bottom lip is a little bit um, fuller than hers so I'm going to take a little bit of concealer and just thin that down a little bit to make it look more like her mouth. And then I took a bronzer, and this is quite an orange toned bronzer, and I'm going to use this as a blush pretty much all over the sides of my cheeks. She was often painted with that because it matches her hair color nicely, so I'm just going to paint that onto my face. 
So for the hair, she had this gigantic mass of orange curls, absolutely gorgeous, but they are natural curls and those are pretty hard to imitate. So I'm going to try my hardest <laughs> using a small curling iron. I'm going to first spray my hair with a heat protectant because this is quite intense curling right here. And then I'm going to just separate out strands of hair every time and curl all of my hair until it's all curled and allow these curls a little while to completely cool down before I touch them again. So when they have cooled down, I'm going to take a boar bristle brush or just any kind of very dense brush in general and brush this out to make it fluffy, more like waves than curls and just a little bit more natural. So in many of the portraits where she's not portrayed as some character, but actually herself just in her home, actual portraits of her, she often has her hair tied back um, or I feel like it's kind of just looped in the back and pinned towards the back of her head. You can see that in one of her paintings it's taken a little bit from kind of like a quarter profile, I'd say. And yeah, there you can see that her hair is gathered in the back and then pinned towards the back of her head. So that's what I'm going to do as well. I'm going to gather my hair in the back, swoop it upwards and pin it to the back of my head. Her hair is a little bit longer, so her swoopy bit's a little bit lower than mine, but this is pretty much the hairstyle. <laughs> And there is your typical pre-Raphaelite Elizabeth Sibel look done. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more Beauty Beacons videos. If you have any historical beauty icons that you would like me to recreate the looks of, leave them down in the comments below and I will have a look and pick someone up for next week. I want to thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!